Hello again YouTube, Mad Dog here. Welcome back to my channel. So tonight's little video is going to be loosely around water purification, but mainly centred around this chemical substance, potassium permanganate. And um, we all know, I think most of you guys and lasses have seen, that if you mix some of this chemical in an emergency with glycerine, you will produce fire. But I'm going to expand on that a little ways and uh, show you one or two more tricks and uh, tips. So stay with me and we'll have a look around that subject. Okay, so I've panned you down here onto the bench a little ways where I've got different items um, here to discuss and demonstrate. Um, as we all know, potassium permanganate is very reactive with anything glycerine based. It causes a thermogenic reaction resulting in fire, but also it's very good for water purification. So I've got a little glass of water here, clear, just for demonstration purposes. And um, I'll show you what I mean. A little. Um, little stick here and I'm just going to dab that into this into this little vial I carry potassium permanganate in this these little glass vials because a small amount of this stuff goes a long way it will last you years so hopefully as you can see right on the very end I'll discard those crystals right on the very end of this stick a couple of crystals maybe three maybe four this will pick up really small ass tiny crystals so I'm going to put that in this glass of water and give it a stir and hopefully as you can see even with that small amount the water has now gone a nice rose pink just slightly pink and that is the rule of thumb to remember if it's just pink it's safe to drink if it's darker than pink then down the sink <laughs> so that being said let me uh, pan you up here a little ways. Good health to you all. I've got no problem drinking that. That's absolutely fine to drink. So I know that my water is now purified. Um, okay, it won't get rid of um, all the bacteria like, you know, Jardia. You know, they take some killing. So we all know iodine another form of water purification if memory serves me right six to twelve drops per liter of iodine tincture um, depending on how bad the water condition is bleach household bleach um, obviously the unscented version of bleach two to four drops per liter so more aggressive um, none of these chemicals are recommended for long-term use obviously you don't want to build up of metals toxins um, over time which will happen so always boil water as and when you can that's the first go-to method however so you know that's that's drinkable uh, potassium permanganate mixture so moving on if I then take a few more crystals and this time I'm going to substantially increase the amount Let me pan you down here a little way so that you can see what's going on. So I've just added a few more crystals. And the water has now gone a real dark purple. So now that is not safe to drink. You will have a potassium overload if you drink that amount. However, this solution is now an ideal antibacterial antiseptic formula. So... If you are suffering the onset of athlete's foot, which is a precursor to trench foot, or you already have an open wound, or abrasions, or an existing infection, then you know soaking this stuff up into your shamog or clothing, and wrapping it around that injury, or soaking your feet in a bowl of this stuff, really good for clearing up fungal infections, and a general antibiotic um, type of medicinal purpose. So that's worth remembering. <clears throat> so the reason I will choose p uh, potassium permanganate over bleach or iodine 
uh, tincture is the multi-use aspect of this. I can light fire with this. I can purify water with this to a degree. I can also use this for signalling. A few sprinkles of this in snow. Because of a, a tiny amount of crystals, it will expand in the snow. You make a massive, massive visible from the air signal. You know, purple, pink against white snow, very effective. So it can be used as a signalling device. Um, obviously it's medicinal purposes so you've, you've got at least four uses for one chemical which to my mind beats bleach and iodine however don't dismiss them they are all very good and still worth considering dropping in a an emergency kit in my opinion purely for the fact that they go a long way so moving on to fire lighting with potassium permanganate before I start this I will do this quick disclaimer these demonstrations probably won't go to plan because my bad, my preps, my chemicals, these are years old. They're subject to very damp conditions out here in the shed. And I'm not expecting any of these to work, to be honest. But I'm showing the method, so please excuse me if they don't instantly burst into flames, you know, like they should. So we all know the standard method of, on the baking tray here, um, some potassium permanganate and some food glycerine glycerine based you know a little vial here of food glycerine but what a lot of people don't explain is that it isn't just food glycerine anything glycol based will form the reaction that we need so car brake fluid i've here some used old car brake fluid um, a little vial of brake fluid there that will work fine Coal antifreeze, blue, red, all the clear, you know, the modern clear, um, blue coal, very aggressive, very um, glycol based. All the modern, more lubricating pink stuff works fine. Some cough medicines do have a high glucose content. Some of those will work to include, over in the UK, we get, I think they're called lockets, the little throat lozenges. The centre of which is very sticky, sugary, and has a high concentration of glycerine in it. That will work as well as a push with potassium permanganate. Um, the fluids that you put in the cigarette, the vape cigarettes, you know, the, the um, cigarette flavoured liquids, they're also glycerine based and work very effectively as well. I think I've covered that in a previous video. Um, one more that springs to mind, which I don't recommend, <coughs> but does work in an emergency, <coughs> do excuse me, is <coughs> if you are in a broken down vehicle and you need to light a fire, all you have is your potassium permanganate, then your battery acid contains sulfuric acid. If you are to t extract some of that sulfuric acid using something glass or metallic, not wood, and then put some drops of that acid onto something cellulose based as in wood, cotton wool, something of that nature and then add a couple of crystals of potassium permanganate you'll get an, a violent reaction causing instant flame which is almost an explosion so not, not to be advised that one but it is worth keeping in the old grey matter I think I've covered that one in a video as well purely for demonstration purposes on the subject of explosives, <laughs> I won't go into this too much for obvious reasons. If potassium permanganate is processed and mixed in, in a, a ratio with various other metallic um, elements, it creates a flash powder which is very unstable, very uh, volatile, very shock prone, sh prone to shock ignition, very very unstable um, and as we all know a flash powder is basically an explosive when contained so we won't go down that avenue if that's not what, what we're here for so we have a bit of potassium permanganate on the table there so let's try it with a bit of antifreeze how to how to car just a few drops of that stuff on there like i say it might not go up straight away because my chemicals are old very damp um poor preps on my my behalf but we'll wait we'll give it a minute We'll see what happens, if anything. I'm not expecting miracles, to be honest. Well, it's heating up. 
you did see smoke there it did react let's give it a few minutes we go it's eventually gone slower than would normally happen because of my bad prep with chemicals but as you can see it does work and it's very hot flame um, <coughs> with fresh chemicals <coughs> more vigorous than that usually uh, so as you can see that worked with um, antifreeze it, the same effect with brake fluid and obviously food glycerine like I've said so moving on now quickly just put that out of the way another method so i've got myself a little board here and a little bag of standard sugar which no doubt most of you guys and lasses will carry in your brew kit you know all form of it's got to be proper sugar really not the sweeteners for this and put some of that stuff down down there not many people also show this method but uh we'll give it a go some um some potassium permanganate on there. I'm really going to get that stuff chowed in there. So, just a, a rough, equalish mix. Probably a little bit more sugar than potassium. Just blend it in somewhat together. And now we're going to use friction, hopefully to cause the fire. So I've got myself a hard piece of wood that I've cut off flatten the end off you can see I've used this already and um, we're just going to press and grind this stuff together I'm not guaranteeing this will work today because my prep ain't good but we'll give it a go wanting to go to be honest I'm not looking hopeful at all <laughs> I'll add a bit more sugar and try again This normally is quite effective. I think you'll find that this is, again, just down to my bad prep and uh, bad chemical maintenance on my part. Like I've always said, I'll show you the fails as well as the wins. Now, if you do keep potassium permag, lessons learnt here, periodically take it out of your kit, empty it out onto a piece of newspaper, somewhere safe, um, dry dry sunny day air it out so that you drive out any moisture you know I've clearly not done that with my old chemicals stored out here in this damp old shed so I'm struggling no nope. she's not wanting to go I can assure you this method does work and I've done a, a previous video showing this method this is just my bad prep so apologies for that but if you've got some of this stuff give it a try just be careful um, you can use a rock or a stone as well for this it's, um, She's not wanting it. That was a fail. <laughs> Let's try again. I hate to give up. I'm going to be, uh, my skin will be dyed a horrible brown orange colour in the morning now. <laughs> Let's 
get plenty of that in there. And some sugar again, just household sugar. Okay, give it the beans. Oh, yep, there we go. We here you get there in the end, patience. Okay, that was short lived, but hopefully, as you can see, it does work. It's just my bad preps. It's still trying there. I think that's all we're going to get. <laughs> yep, that looks like that's all we're going to get. That's all, folks. <laughs> so, anyways, you get the gist. With fresh chemicals, that does work quite effectively, believe it or not. So, I just thought I'd quickly show different uses for potassium permanganate and also a little warning that fresh chemicals it is reactive be careful how you store it and where you store it treat it with respect and do consider carrying some in a first aid kit or your survival kit or both because it serves both of those purposes so in closing poor demonstration there i know that by me but like i say i'll show you the fails as well as the wins that was definitely a fail <laughs> but it gets the method out there feel free to try it yourselves but do it safely you know be mindful of these things they're not not to be played with unless you have some experience as, as to how to store them properly let's say obviously if you do have these in your kit especially first aid kits keep them well away from any other medical things that you might innocently store because one or both of these leak you've got yourself a problem so anyway, that's it for tonight. Um, I've got a bit of news to share with you all, which I'll probably announce on another video sometime in the future. Not not too uh, not too far away. A um, bit of news regarding a progression with my channel. You might say I'm working away on something at the moment in the background, <clears throat> which will hopefully improve my. Um, content for you guys and lasses so that will do for that for now anyway have a great weekend all until next time mad dog signing off yeah